Welcome to the fourth section of RESTful Web Services with ASP.NET Core. In this section, we will take the next steps with our ASP.NET Core Web API. In this section, you will learn something about formatters and content negotiation. We will take a look at logging and validation in our API. After that, we will have a video about documentation with Swagger. We will implement paging, sorting, and filtering to our API. Also, we will add versions to our API, and in the last video, we will take a look at authentication for our API. Of course, we will summarize in the end what we've learned so far. So let's start with the first video, Formatters in Content Negotiation. Formatters in Content Negotiation is needed when the client wants to tell the server in which data format the data comes and which data format he accepts. So we are dealing with input formatters and output formatters. The input formatters are dealing with a request. So the client is telling the server in which data format the data comes. He can use the HTTP header content type for that. The output formatter on the other side is dealing with the response. So the client can tell the server that he is accepting the data in a specific format. He can use the HTTP header accept for that. If the content type or the accept header are not sent with a request, then it's okay if the API uses a default one. But if the API is not supporting a content type or an accept header, the API should return the correct status code for that. Let's see that in a demo. So we have our API up and running and if you fire a simple get request to API slash customers, we get back a 200 OK status code and we see our results in JSON. Even if we take single customer here, we see that we get back the result in JSON. But why is that? The reason for this is that ASP.NET Core adds the JSON output formatter per default. To tell the server what we accept as an answer, we can add an accept header and give it the value application slash JSON. So now we are telling the server that we as a client do accept JSON. If we send this, we get back our response body as JSON. But what if we type XML here? Let's do slash XML and send it now. We still get back a response body as JSON. And this is because ASP.NET Core does not know application slash XML yet and so it falls back to the default behavior which is JSON in this case. But it would be better if we would give the correct status code here and tell the client that the accept header is not supported in this case. We can do that very simple inside our API. The add MVC method takes a parameter where we can set up our API. There we can add the behavior that the correct status code should be returned when the accept header is not supported. Here you can see that we're setting the property return HTTP not acceptable to true. Let's try that out. If we fire the request again to our API, see we're getting back JSON. If we get a single customer, you can see this. If we now pass the header, accept application.xml, we get back a 406 not acceptable, which is the correct status code in that case. If we do an application JSON here, we get back a response body as JSON. But let's add XML support to our API. Back in our web app, we can right click on our project and manage NuGet packages and then browse for a package called ASP.NET Core MVC Formatters XML. We install it. Okay, if we now go back to our startup file, we can simply add the XML formatter as an output formatter. Here you can see that the output formatters are nothing else than a collection and we call add on it and adding a new XML serializer output formatter. Let's try that out. We are first calling all customers again. And we see we get back the result. Let's call one customer. Okay, we have Chuck Norris and now let's add the accept header. You should always add an accept header as best practice. 
json and then we get it back as json now let's do xml and now you can see we're getting back a response body as xml now let's also add xml support as an input formatter so adding the input formatter is very similar to adding the output formatter the only thing we have to do is adding an xml serializer input formatter to the input formatters of the config so what we're doing is we're adding a new XML serializer input formatter to the input formatters. Let's start the application. The application is running. And now we can send a POST request to the URL localhost API customers. And we're sending the content type. So we're saying the content type of my request body is application XML. And we do accept application JSON as a response. And if we take a look at the body, we can see that we are sending a customer create DDO with the first name Chuck, the last name Norris, with an age of 54. As a format, we choose application XML. Let's send that. And you can see as a response, we're getting back our JSON with the ID and the 201 created status code. In the headers, we can see the location, we can copy that. and send a GET request to the URL. Here we're getting the response in JSON. If we're adding an accept header with application XML, and we send it, we're getting back a response in XML. Okay, and this is how you can add input and output formatters to your API and giving the client the possibility to say which format he accepts and in which format the request body comes to the API so that the API can model bind it. So let's summarize this video shortly. So in this video we saw how we can add input formatters to our API. The client has to tell the server which format he accepts via the content type HTTP header. The ASP.NET Core API is then able to bind the data from the body to the model we accept in our methods. We also saw how we can add output formatters to our API which format the response body. The client can tell that to the server via the HTTP accept header. In our API we are supporting JSON and XML where JSON is the more common format nowadays. If you have an internal API maybe you only need JSON, but if you have a public API maybe it's a better idea to support XML as well. We also saw how we can return the correct status code if the content type is not supported. Last but not least, always keep in mind to send the accept and the content type header which each request, so that the API knows how to deal with the request you are sending.